The small town of Quero, Texas, nestled amid the vast expanse of rolling fields and endless ranches, held a special place in the hearts of its residents. Life in Quero was simple and slow-paced with a down-home charm. Even the most anxiety-filled people would go to chill out. The scent of wildflowers and the sound of old-fashioned bells above doorways mingled with the whispers of a close-knit community. It was a place where legends and folklore danced hand-in-hand hand with reality, blurring the boundaries between the ordinary and the extraordinary. The Williams family lived on the outskirts of Quero, embodying the spirit of Texan resilience and warmth, meaning there wasn't a whole hell of a lot to do there. John, a gritty, hard-working father, carved out a living in the cattle industry. His strong hands forged by the challenges of the land. Lindsay, his wife, was the backbone of their household, nurturing the children with love and the wisdom she obtained that was passed down through many generations. So, trad wife, Susan and Mike, the older of the siblings, had grown up in Quero watching the beautiful town blossom like a rose as they grew older. But it was Randy, the youngest member of the Williams family, who possessed an insatiable curiosity and a boundless imagination. His wide eyes, brimming with wonder, saw the world through a lens of infinite possibilities. Quero was his playground, and within its borders, he took on countless adventures, fueled by the mysteries whispered by the wind. So he runs all over the place going, ooh, pretty butterfly. As the sun lazily dipped toward the horizon, it cast long shadows over the fields. The residents of Quero could never have imagined the crazy-ass events that would soon unfold within their humble little community. They would soon come face to face with a horribly disturbing presence, drawing them deeper into the heart of darkness where the untamed wilderness of Texas collides with the unknown. The sun began its descent, casting a warm golden glow over the fields surrounding Quero. Randy felt an irresistible urge to explore the wonders that were in the fenced-in cattle pasture just beyond their backyard. Watch your step. Lots of bullshit. With a heart full of curiosity and imagination, ready to dive into the unknown, he made his way out into the sprawling landscape. As Randy meandered through the tall grass and sporadic trees, a gentle breeze whispered against his ears. The air was alive with the symphony of buzzing insects and chirping birds, and the occasional mooing of cattle in the distance. It was in this serene moment that Randy's sharp eyes caught a flicker of movement near an old oak tree, its ancient decaying branches reaching towards the sky. Intrigued, Randy cautiously snuck closer to get a better look. His senses were on high alert, attuned to every rustle and whisper. And there, tucked in the spotty shadows, he caught sight of something strange. A creature that 
looked like a dog, but different. It stood several yards away. Its presence was both odd and mysterious. The creature stood at about knee height. Its body had not one hair on it. Its skin was a burnt looking dark bluish brown and wrinkled similar to an elephant. Its piercing deep blue eyes had a captivating gaze. They created an otherworldly glow that seemed to hypnotize Randy with their essence. Its pointed ears twitched in all different directions, analyzing the sounds around it. Randy's heart raced with excitement as he took in the creature's unique features. Its dog-like form, equipped with slender limbs and nimble paws, alluded to a creature built for agility and stealth. Sharp claws protruded from its paws and very long canine teeth ready to grasp whatever they came near. Transfixed, Randy watched as the creature locked eyes with him, acknowledging his presence in its world. A surge of exhilaration rushed through his veins, an almost supernatural connection formed between humans and that odd-looking critter. In that singular moment, he knew he had stumbled upon something extraordinary. Even though a surge of fear and worry washed over him, Randy's insatiable curiosity prevailed. However, as he took a step to approach it, the mutt let out a loud howl. Frightened beyond belief, he ran back to the house. <laughs> All you saw was assholes at elbows. He shared his frightening discovery with his family, unaware of the profound impact this innocent little encounter would have on the town of Cuero and the lives of his entire family. Mr. Ramirez, a humble rancher who resided just a stone's throw away from the Williams Ranch, had a long history tending to his cattle in the vast fields surrounding his property. It was in the midst of his daily routine that he found himself entangled in a perplexing and unnerving encounter. Late one afternoon, as the sun dipped towards the horizon, Mr. Ramirez embarked on his usual rounds to check on his livestock. The amber-colored sun, radiant and full, illuminated his path as he made his way through the fields. His heart sank as he stumbled upon a gruesome sight. Among the grazing cattle, he discovered one of his prized cows <sighs> lying lifeless on the ground. Its neck marred by three puncture wounds with no blood coming out. Its body was all shriveled up and looked like a fur-covered skeleton. He checked and its body was completely drained of blood. Damn! How did he check that? Shock and confusion coursed through his body, for in all his years of ranching, he had never seen anything like it. Driven by a mixture of concern and frustration, Mr. Ramirez knelt down beside the cow, examining the wounds with a wrinkled brow. They were about the width of a straw and went very deep. As he surveyed the scene, he saw movement to his right, and his attention darted towards the periphery of his vision. There, 
lurking at the edge of a field, stood a creature unlike anything he had ever encountered. Its silhouette, partially obscured by the shadows, sent a chill down his spine. Angry yet captivated, he focused on the mysterious being. Every one of his senses became heightened in the quiet afternoon breeze. The creature seemed to possess an air of otherworldly presence. Its hunched form stood about two to three feet. Its leathery, hairless, dark skin glistened faintly under the sun's glow. Its long, spindly limbs terminated in clawed feet. It seemed to defy natural boundaries, but it was the creature's face that captivated him. Its snout was elongated and slender, lined with rows of razor-sharp teeth. Bright blue eyes that burned like a pilot light fixated upon him, exuding an intensity that froze him in fear. He felt an inexplicable connection to it, as if the creature's gaze pierced the depths of his soul. However, at that moment, he snapped out of it, and fear was replaced with anger and vengeance. The stories and legends whispered among the townsfolk suddenly resonated within his consciousness. He said out loud, That's a chupacabra! A surge of adrenaline raced through his veins, completely overriding his initial fear. Hulk smash! Determination took hold as he mustered the courage to confront the creature and capture the truth that had eluded so many in the past. He slowly stood up and leveled his rifle at the creature in the dimming sunlight. He centered the crosshairs on the chupacabra and squeezed the trigger. He heard a dog-like yelp come from the monster. Then, just as swiftly as it had appeared, the chupacabra vanished into the darkness leaving him standing in bewildered awe. Breathless and perplexed, Mr. Ramirez stood there, staring at the darkening area the beast once stood. The realization dawned upon him that he had just come face to face with a creature that actually existed, that so many said, wasn't real. A creature that defied the boundaries of their known world. Unaware of young Randy's own encounter with the Chupacabra, Mr. Ramirez asked around town if anyone had seen what he had seen, not knowing the impact it would have on Cuero and the lives of those who resided there. Little did he know that what he witnessed would intertwine with the events that would shape the destiny of himself, the Williams family, and the whole community in ways he could scarcely imagine. As whispers of the Chupacabra's presence continued to ripple through the air in Cuero, Aware of her son Randy's sighting and Mr. Ramirez's harrowing encounter, Lindsay embarked on her own spine-chilling experience that would forever alter her belief in the unknown. Wait, so she still went out after hearing their stories? It was a quiet afternoon when Lindsay decided to take a stroll along the outskirts of their property. The sun bathed the Texas landscape in golden hues, casting shadows that stretched across the field. 
little did she know that the tranquility she sought would soon be shattered by an account that defied all reason. As Lindsay ventured further from the safety of her home, a sense of unease tingled at the nape of her neck. The air felt charged with an eerie energy and an inexplicable heaviness settled on her shoulders. She quickened her pace, her footsteps muffled by the tall grass swaying in the gentle breeze. It was then, among the rustling leaves and distant chirping of birds, that Lindsay caught sight of something moving not far from her. I hope she at least brought a gun. Her heart skipped a beat and a cold shiver cascaded down her spine as she locked eyes with a creature she could hardly imagine. There, mere yards away, stood the chupacabra, the embodiment of death and mystery. Its presence was simultaneously captivating and horrifying. Lindsay's breath cut in her throat as she took in its gaunt figure. Its dark, hairless skin glistened under the sunlight. The creature's piercing blue eyes bore into Lindsay's soul, seemingly peering through the layers of her being. Its elongated snout quivered with each laboring breath, revealing rows of menacing teeth. In that instant, Lindsay understood the gravity of the situation. That's when she knew she fucked up. She stood face to face with a creature that defied explanation. A creature that blurred the boundaries between myth and reality. The chupacabra, sensing Lindsay's presence, emitted a low guttural growl that reverberated through the air. The sound echoed in Lindsay's ears, sending a jolt of adrenaline coursing through her veins. She knew she had to retreat to escape the clutches of this enigmatic being that had infiltrated her peaceful ranch. With every ounce of courage she could summon, Lindsay began to slowly inch backward. Her eyes locked on the chupacabra's intense gaze. Each step felt like it took forever. The distance between them grew with agonizing slowness. And then, in a swift movement, she spun around and started to run, but tripped over a large rock lying right behind her. Fail! She heard the sound of trampling through grass. The chupacabra was charging toward her. She quickly jumped to her feet and sprinted towards her door without looking back. Turbo, 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 turbo! As she reached her porch, she grabbed the doorknob and pulled hard. But her hand was so sweaty, it slipped off. Terrified, she, she looked back. The chupacabra was nearly to her porch. She hastily wiped her hand on her shirt and tried again. This time, it opened. She stumbled in and slammed the door behind her. As she did, she heard a loud thud against the door, along with a muffled growl. <sighs> Breathless and trembling horribly, Lindsay got up as John came running out of the bathroom and her kids came from their bedroom simultaneously descending upon her. She clung to her loved ones, 
recounting the unimaginable encounter that had unfolded. Her voice quivered as she relayed the details, the raw fear mingling with a sense of wonder and disbelief. As Lindsay's words hung in the air, a heavy silence enveloped the room. John held her tightly, his face etched with concern and determination. They knew they could no longer dismiss the chupacabra as mere folklore or delusion. It had become an undeniable presence seeping into the very fabric of their lives. The once peaceful and idyllic town of Cuero now bore the weight of a phantom menace lurking in the shadows, waiting to strike again. The Williams family understood that they couldn't afford to ignore the threat any longer. They had to take action to protect themselves and the community. Determined to rid the town of the menacing critter that lurked in the shadows, John, his oldest son Mike, and Mr. Ramirez took off on a daring hunt for the chupacabra. Lock and low, baby! With rifles slung over their shoulders and flashlights illuminating their path ahead, they ventured into the moonlit night. The crunch of leaves beneath their boots echoing their bold steps. As they delved deeper into the thick foliage, a sense of dread mingled with excitement heightened their senses to the slightest movement. They knew they were entering the domain of the chupacabra, but the urgency to protect their loved ones pushed them forward. Suddenly, the silence was shattered by a blood-curdling howl, chilling their bones and quickening their pulses. It was the unmistakable cry of the chupacabra, spurring the group into tactical positions. Shields up! Without hesitation, John raised his rifle, his hands steady, despite a surge of anxiety coursing through his veins. Mike and Mr. Ramirez followed suit. They moved swiftly, expertly navigating the dense undergrowth, their flashlights piercing the darkness around them. The moon's glow illuminated a clearing up ahead, revealing the silhouette of a creature lurking in the shadows. The chupacabra stood defiantly, its eyes glaring with an eerie radiance as it watched the approaching hunters. A surge of primal instinct overcame the group as they faced off with the malevolent creature. <laughs> With a thunderous roar, the chupacabra lunged forward, teeth bared and claws fully extended. Its intent was abundantly clear, to eliminate those who dared to challenge it. The air crackled as bullets whizzed through the night, punctuating the darkness with flashes of light and the deafening sound of repeated gunfire. Ah, I love the smell of gun smoke in the morning. A fierce battle ensued. The hunters skillfully evaded the creature's deadly lunges while firing their weapons with precision. Each shot echoed through the night pushing them closer to either victory or the brink of defeat. 
the forest became a brutal battleground where there could be only one victor. Minutes felt like hours as the group relentlessly pursued the chupacabra, their determination unwavering. The creature, wounded but not dead, fought back with savage resilience. Cornered and wounded, the chupacabra made a final desperate attempt to elude its ruthless pursuers. It darted into a dense pile of downed trees, disappearing from sight. The hunters cautiously approached, their breaths heavy. Their instincts were on high alert. Suddenly, the silence was shattered as the chupacabra lunged from the shadows at Mike. Its, its jaws repeatedly snapping with deadly intent. The group reacted instinctively. Bullets flew through the air. Several finding their mark in the creature's vulnerable torso. With a final anguished howl, the chupacabra collapsed, its life force drifting away. Mike walked over to the deadly creature, put his gun to its head, and closed the issue. The hunters, panning and covered in sweat, stood over their fallen adversary. A mixture of relief and awe washing over them. They had killed the mysterious creature that had shocked their town, bringing an end to its reign of terror. Word of the hunter's triumph over the chupacabra spread like wildfire through the small town of Cuero. The community gathered to witness the end of the creature that had killed so much of their livestock and pets. The Williams family and Mr. Ramirez, hailed as heroes, stood before the crowd ready to unveil the truth. A renowned zoologist and a team of experts had been summoned to examine the fallen chupacabra. At first glance, they all claimed it was just a coyote with mange, but were taken aback when they noticed it only had three toes on each paw. With cautious precision, they dissected the creature. DNA samples, along with skin and organ specimens, were taken to the lab for evaluation. The air was thick with anticipation as the experts cut into the heart of the mystery and its body. Several weeks later, the zoologist, with a mixture of shock and bewilderment, revealed his findings to the captivated crowd. The chupacabra, it turned out, was not a coyote with mange, but a previously undiscovered species of canine. A remarkable and highly adaptable predator. Its bizarre appearance, characterized by hairless dark skin, elongated limbs, and razor-sharp fangs, served as evolutionary adaptations for survival in its natural habitat. The creature's ability to sustain itself on the blood of various sources, including small animals and livestock, had given legitimacy to the legends and lore that had foolishly been ridiculed. However, this only spawned more questions. Where did it come from? Did it recently evolve? Why does it only drink the blood of its victims and not eat the meat like other canines? And 
most importantly, are there more of them? Years had passed since the Williams family and the townspeople of Quero had confronted the chupacabra threat. Life had regained a semblance of normalcy, and their memory of their previous encounters had begun to fade away. However, the lingering presence of the chupacabra still haunted their dreams. A constant reminder that the darkness could still return to their peaceful little town. One quiet evening, as the sun painted the sky with hues of orange and gold, the Williams family gathered on their front porch to grill some steaks. You know those gotta be fresh. Lindsay, John, and their children shared laughter and stories cherishing the tranquility of their surroundings. But in the distance, beyond the fields that stretched in front of them, a sense of unease crept into the air. Ah, here we go. As the family's conversation waned, a low, haunting howl pierced the silence from the distance. It was a sound they knew all too well. The unmistakable cry of the chupacabra. The warmth drained from their faces as their eyes met. A mixture of fear and, not again, reflected in their expressions. I. I thought it was, it was over, Lindsay whispered to John, her voice trembling with a mixture of disbelief and dread. So did I, John concurred. John's grip tightened around Lindsay's hand, his voice steady but laced with concern. But maybe we were too quick to assume. It seems the chupacabras have returned. Susan, Mike, and Randy exchanged worried glances, their innocent faces contorted with a mixture of concern and terror. The chupacabra, once a distant nightmare, now loomed close, casting a shadow over their peaceful existence. In that unsettling moment, the Williams family understood that their battle was far from over. The chupacabra, with its insatiable hunger for blood and unrelenting presence, was on the move once more. It was a foe they could not and would not ignore. A reminder that darkness has a way of resurfacing testing their resolve and challenging the very essence of their unity. With a shared determination, the Williams family slowly rose from their porch, ready to face the encroaching threat once again. Several haunting calls of the chupacabra lingered in the air. A chilling reminder of the dangers that lie ahead. With terror and determination intertwining, they listened. The night air carrying the unmistakable sound of the chupacabra's cries from the fields. The Williams family, standing united, steeled themselves for the trials ahead ready to protect their town and loved ones from the haunting menace of the chupacabra. Yeah.